This episode of the Rental Income Podcast is brought to you by the all-new FreshBooks, where you can create and send professional-looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to my listeners. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash RIP and enter Rental Income Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. My guest on the podcast today is a really conservative investor. He actually calls himself a scaredy cat investor. But he hasn't let that stop him from building out his rental portfolio. And I I really admire that because there are a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're investing in real estate. And if you're too conservative, that can really paralyze you and stop you from ever getting started. My guest has a great story and a great strategy for building out his rental portfolio. So I want to hear exactly what he's doing. So let's take a real quick break. We'll get a word in from our sponsor. We'll come back in 30 seconds and we'll meet Mitch Jawoski from Florida. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the U.S. Our simple, proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Get your free copy of the ultimate guide to passive real estate investing at noradarealestate.com slash guide. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com slash guide. Mitch, let's start at the very beginning. What got you first interested in investing in rental properties? Really, I fell into it because uh, a friend of mine, his dad was renting a uh, home that was being foreclosed on because the landlord was not paying the mortgage. So um, we were watching a football game one day and, you know, I heard this and it just a light bulb went off. And I said, you know, hey, if I can get a, you know, property with the same number of bedrooms and and, and rent it to you for the same price, would you want to do that? And, um, you know, he was ready to go. He just basically told me, let me know when, uh, when, when I should move. So, uh, I basically started my investing career, breaking that rule of don't do business with friends and family. <laughs> but, uh, I, I feel like, um, knowing my soon to be tenant, you know, gave me a little comfort given the fact that I have a uh, risk averse approach. And, um, at that time, I really didn't know anything about screening a tenant or, um, you know, kind of doing background checks and things like that. Um, so, uh, it's, uh, luckily it worked out and, uh, he's actually still in that property. Um, and it's been a little over three years now. Okay. So, so I mean that, that sounds like it worked out great. So you just knew him because of your relationship and you figured he's probably been paying rent or he wouldn't be living where he's living now. So you, you kind of, Without doing a formal background check, you, you kind of, he wasn't just some random guy you plucked off the street. Yeah. Right? And now that you mention it, I guess, you know, by default, there was, I guess, some background because he was in that previous home for five years. Right. So, you know, he had been paying rent for five years. So I knew that clearly, um, you know, he was solid, at least in terms of rental payments. Um, so, and, and I'd actually had been, you know, in the home once or twice. Um, so, you know, I saw that, you know, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, a disaster and he maintained the home. So, right. uh, okay. I guess, in, yeah, I guess in a way I accidentally did a, uh, a tenant screening. Right. So you, your qualifications for that first property is you just wanted something similar to what he had right now. Yeah. Right. I mean, very simplistic. This was before I kind of went down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, investing and learning about, uh, you know, um, rental property investing. So, Really, it was, all right, I need to find a three-bedroom place. I need to find a three-bedroom place that is, you know, within a mile a mile or two to where he was currently living. And um, also something where I knew that the rent he was going to pay me, you know, covered my mortgages, you know, my mortgage, my taxes. Um, I didn't know about kind of reserves and maintenance back then. Uh, luckily, you know, the number still ended up working out. Um but um, those are, you know, essentially, you know, newbie, newbie things where, you know, you don't know what you fa- should be factoring in mm-hmm. to get correct calculation for a true cash flow number. Right, right. And so with your conservative approach, you had a 20% down payment for that property? 
I did. I put 20% down. Um, I took out a traditional 30 year mortgage. I mean, it really was no different than if I was buying the home, you know, for, for myself in terms of the process. Okay. After you bought that place and, and you saw that you were cash flowing and this was actually making you money, is that then what kind of said, maybe we should do this again? Maybe I should buy another property and keep growing the portfolio? Yeah, that's when, um, that's when uh, the light bulb started, uh, you know, flashing. And I realized that, you know, rental property investing is awesome for a few reasons. And, you know, one, you have someone else paying down your mortgage. Two, if, you know, you do buy right and it cash flows, you have passive income coming in every month, Mm -hmm. you know, and three, you also have the possibility of appreciation, um, you know, especially if you live in a market like I do in South Florida, where, you know, things do move up and down more so than, you know, in other areas uh, in the country. Right, right. So when you're looking at a deal, do you factor in appreciation? Or are are you counting on that, that this might appreciate? Or do you kind of put that out of your head and if it happens, it happens, but if not, whatever. It is completely out of my head. Okay. I look at appreciation as icing on the cake. Um, when I look at a property, I mean, you know, I, maybe it's my financial background, but first thing I do is I run the numbers. Um, I have a property calculator um, that I use in Microsoft Excel. I run the numbers. I see if they, you know, work at all. And if they do, then I'll go look at the property. Um, but yeah, I don't factor in appreciation um, as uh, a decision maker, so to speak. Okay. Um, I just want to see, yeah, I want to see that the property cash flows and that, you know, that cash flow, you know, uh, there's a buffer there, so to speak. I mean, um, I generally have like a minimum target um, I go for. And um, I know based on that, if for any reason, um, you know, my rent uh, is stagnant for a year or two, uh, let's say if the economy is bad or something, I know that I'm still going to be making some money. Um, it may not be as much as the prior year, but, you know, I have a, enough of a buffer where it's still going to cash flow. Um, so I don't really have to worry about whether the home is going up in value, down in value or sideways um, as long as I, you know, have it uh, filled and uh, I'm collecting rent. Is there a typical target that you like to see for a property, like a, a, a certain dollar amount that you want to make per month? Um, I'm also looking at cash on cash. I mean, I do. There is a dollar amount, um, but I guess that's relative to the price point uh, of your property and the market you're in. Um, for my area, um, I'm generally trying to get at least $200 uh, in cash flow um, per property. And that is, you know, obviously um, factoring in money for a month's vacancy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, maintenance, reserves, all that. Right. You know, there's, there's times when I'm bringing in more money than that, you know, when, you know, you have a tenant that renews and stays multiple years. Well, you just picked up a month's worth of rent right there right. for the year. Um, you know, you, you know, and then you know how it goes with, um, the maintenance you have periods where there's nothing for a long time. And then all of a sudden you get hit with a few things in like a two month span. Absolutely. Um, That's always the way it happens. Yeah. You, you'll go month yeah. after month after month without anything. And then all of a sudden, you'll have seven things come up at the same time. So yeah, that's, yep. that's the way it works. It's uh, what is that? They say, uh, everything happens in threes. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. I just, I actually, I just went through that. I had a nice long stretch of nothing. And then, um, just this past month I had three things pop up. There was, you know, two issues at one property and then one at another. And it all happened literally within a one week span. <laughs> it was wow. Like, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, that's why it's so important during the good times to to save money so that when that when those when those big things do come up or even a bunch of little things come up, you're prepared and it doesn't ruin you. Um, well, uh, you know, and it's important you mention that because what I see a lot um, is so there's a, a few different real estate agents uh, you know that I work with down here and. Um, and don't get me wrong, they're good agents, but, you know, they have a different perspective um, if they're not, especially if they're not uh, active investors. And they'll bring me things and be like, oh, you know, this has, a, this has a 10 cap or a 12 cap. And then, I'm, you know, I take the information in and then I run, run the numbers myself. And I'm just like, yeah, not so much. Right. Because 
they don't factor in maintenance and reserves. And, you know, you have to do that because the bottom line is you're going to have things pop up that you have to spend money on. So right. A, you're coming directly out of pocket, um, you know, or B, you know, your numbers aren't what you think they are. Mitch, I want to talk to you about how you used equity from the house that you're living in to buy your second property. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to thank our sponsor, FreshBooks.com. FreshBooks has made my life so much easier. It used to be a nightmare keeping track of miles and business receipts. But now with FreshBooks, it's so simple. I just take up my phone. I take a picture of the receipt. I log it into FreshBooks and I'm done. It, It takes me literally seconds to do this. The other thing that is really cool, just a really neat feature that they have is you can send invoices to your tenants. Now, this is an interesting fact. They found that 60% of people, when they get an invoice, they pay it within one day. So if you're having trouble getting your tenants to pay rent on time, send them an invoice to remind them that rent is due. They can click on a link and they can pay you directly. Super simple. It takes about 30 seconds to send out an invoice. So it's a really great thing to try. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to my listeners. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash RIP and enter rental income podcast in the how did you hear about us section. That's freshbooks.com slash RIP and enter rental income podcast in the how did you hear about us section. All right, Mitch, let's get back to the interview. So tell me about your second property. That was a little condo I bought. That one was actually my largest um, renovation project, which was nothing crazy because it's a it's a two two. Um, it's like it's more so a villa, you know, one story building. Um, it's about a thousand square feet, so uh, wasn't too crazy to overhaul that one. That one, um, basically, I um, used an equity line on my place. Um, and then some savings to buy that one in cash. Um, I actually bought it off one of those third party, third party auction sites, which, um, was, uh, different for me. And, uh, the only time I've done that. Um, so, so t- tell me about that. You, so you couldn't see the inside of the property before you bought it, right? Actually, no, no, I could. I could. Oh, okay. Good. Good. I don't think, I think I'm too much of a scary. <laughs> yeah. to, uh, um, so yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was uh, on lockbox. Um, you know, realtors could take you to see it, uh, all that good stuff. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a typical foreclosure. Um, okay. You know, it's kind of like an REO, essentially. But for some reason, they use um, they use these third-party auction sites as opposed to just having it straight listed uh, on the MLS. Um, n- never quite understood. It yeah. doesn't seem so beneficial to the banks. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, so no, I was actually able to see it and um, – there wasn't a whole lot of interest in it, um, which worked out for me. So uh, I got it for um, a pretty decent price. I mean, not crazy below market, but enough where I could buy it, do the renovation, and I still had some equity uh, built in uh, off the off the jump. So um, that worked out well because, um, you know, luckily I have a, a handyman that uh, does pretty solid work um, for an extremely fair price. So um you know, he got in there and um, I actually jumped in with him and uh, we replaced uh, the floors and the bedrooms, uh, you know, new toilets, uh, new vanity, uh, you know, sinks and faucets, um, you know, and then I replaced the appliances. Um, and that was the gist of it, you know, mainly cosmetic stuff. Um, and uh, outside of that, the property was in good shape. Um, OK. Yeah. Now, so that for the, for your first property, we, we talked about how you didn't really need to screen the tenant because you had the relationship, but this was your first stranger that was coming in. Did you kind of figure out how to do screening on this one or how, how did, how did you yes. check out the tenants? Yes, this was, um, this was the, this was essentially the learning experience, um, you know, going through uh, the process of showing uh, a property and fielding calls and, 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 you know, and I wanted the experience. So um, essentially I could obviously do it again in the future, but also for, you know, when uh, I hire property management, I also know how to kind of vet them out and what mm-hmm. questions to ask and see how they go about uh, things. So, um, 
yeah, I, um, I listed, uh, I listed the rental, uh, myself and, uh, I was, you know, doing the screening and the calls and, uh, luckily, um, from going to some local meetups, um, I have an investor friend who, you know, handles all his, um, rental properties. So he told me some of the services he uses to run background checks and, 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 and credit and all that stuff. So, um, I piggybacked off of that and, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, met potential, uh, tenants, uh, at the property and, uh, I learned a few things real quick. Um, I now know why people schedule showings in clusters because <laughs> a lot of times people don't show up. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you get a lot of that? Um, not as much as you'd probably think. Um, I would say maybe, I'd say maybe 25%. Okay. Yeah. That sounds about right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. I mean, and luckily the property is not far from where I live. I mean, it's literally about two, three miles down the road. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I didn't mind, I didn't mind, um, showing it and everything. Um, I didn't, uh, do that for the most recent property I purchased. Um, it's about a 30 minute drive, um, from me. So I actually decided to hire a, um, a realtor to, um, do tenant placement for me. And, uh, unfortunately that wasn't the best experience. Um, I probably should have just done it myself, but, uh, I also, you know, learned some stuff from that experience in terms of, uh, you know, who you want to use and how to go about it. Um, when you're hiring someone else to, uh, do tenant placement so for you. T- t- tell me about this. So w- what did, w- where did things go wrong? Well, the first thing I learned was, there's a difference between buying and selling a property and, and renting a property in terms of what realtor office you want to use. So the first thing I would have done differently is I would have went to the first three offices that were nearest to my property and basically walked in and seen how busy uh, things were and what was going on and then used one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, the agent I used, you know, was in an office that was two towns over and, um, you know, really didn't specialize in the area. Um, so that's definitely the first thing I would do differently. Um, also, um, little things like in terms of like, you know, you basically sign a contract with them, um, you know, to, to fill your property and they'll give themselves a certain time period. Uh, when I signed that contract, I was in the midst, midst of doing the, the renovation and trying to get the place ready um, by that weekend that I kind of didn't even notice everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, the time period was a lot longer than uh, I, I would have otherwise because I got to the point where, all right, I essentially want to fire you guys and do this myself. And then I'm like, wait, I can't because I gave you guys way too much time to fill this in terms of number of days. So that's something else uh, that, you know, I now know going forward to pay attention to. So how many Um, days would you give someone? You know, that's actually something that I think you have to negotiate. Um, In my area, I feel like if you can't get something rented in 45 days, then you're don't, you're yeah. not doing a good job. I mean, there's a lot of demand in South Florida. Um, you know, people move here every single day. Yeah. Um, so that would be kind of my okay. kind of breaking point. I don't know if, you know, they're willing to do that amount of time. Um, you know, they might want at least two months, but, uh, you know, I've been able to fill my properties myself on my own, you know, all within a month, uh, every time. So if yeah. I'm not a quote unquote professional, then you should be able to do it in the same time frame. Right. Yeah. I, I got to think, of course, every market is different, but I, I got to say if a property is sitting vacant for more than a month, something's wrong. Um, you know, and your price might be wrong or the condition or th- there's something wrong up, up. It shouldn't take, months and months to rent a property in most markets. Um, exactly. the, the other thing with a realtor that's tough getting a realtor to rent your property is th- they're not making that much. Like, you know, maybe they're getting a half a month's rent or maybe the full month's rent, but it's, um, it, it's not a lot of money. So I, I think that they don't always have a lot of motivation where if they have people that are looking to buy houses, they're going to make a much bigger commission. So, um, 
So it's tough, but there are realtors out there that specialize in rentals, and th- that's probably someone you want, or maybe even a property manager that would market it for you. But um, exactly, and that's the thing too. When you're just having them fill it, and uh, you know you plan on self managing, they're even less motivated. But right. um, you know that's also something that I would do. Like I know a good property management company, but they will do just tenant placement as well. Right. Um, if I could do it over again, I would go to them because, you know, I have, you know, investor friends that use them that are, you know, happy with their results. So, yeah. you know, it's like anything else, you know, you have the experience you learn. Um, that's essentially, you know, how most of my career has been, whether it was, you know, day trading or, you know, now investing in rental properties is I, you know, I have the experiences myself, then I know how to do it better the next time. And then I do my best to share those experiences with, with other people so they can just do it right the first time mm-hmm. and hopefully learn from my experience. Um, you know, and, uh, hopefully, hopefully they can, um, because it, uh, it saves a lot of time. We don't have to go through right. the uh, pain itself. <laughs> tell us how you're, you're helping people. So you've written a book. Um, tell us about your, your book and, and how people can find it. Yeah. So, um, basically I've taken, you know, the experiences from my investing, uh, my real estate investing career and, um, also my kind of my personality of being, uh, essentially a scaredy cat. And I created, um, scaredy cat guide to investing in rental properties. Um, awesome. and yeah, it's, uh, essentially, I mean, it's really like just a step-by-step, uh, guide through the moment you decide you want to buy an, a rental property to, you know, the moment you hand the keys to your, you know, your, your, your new tenant, um, essentially everything that goes into that, um, and, you know, every step along the way that you're gonna have to go through from, you know, making offers to, you know, getting an inspection done to what to expect at the closing table, because the first time you sit at the closing table, your head's going to spin and, um, you know, knowing what's coming at you and, and the specific things you should look out for, um, to make sure they're correct, uh, is very important. So, um, yeah, just, you know, almost, almost hand holding, you know, people through the process. And then, um, you know, after you close on a property, what to do in regard to tenant proofing, you know, the property and, uh, you know, how to screen a tenant and all those good things I've learned over the, uh, last, uh, three or four years. Well, it sounds like a great resource. If someone wants to buy it, what's the, the best way to do it? Um, I have an ebook um, on my website, uh, which is scaredycatguide.com. Um, the book is also on Amazon Kindle, and uh, it should be uh, available for paperback on Amazon as well in the very near future. If you missed any of that, I'll go ahead and put all those links on my website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 120. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing. I really appreciate it. I'll be back with a new episode next Tuesday, and I'll talk to you then.